Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay, well, the good news is... Hey guys, Stealth here, and welcome to another Shipyard Champions. Today it's a duel. It's a duel between Brother Maro and myself. And between some of the other guys as well, naturally. Now, the way that this worked is that one of us got to set a duel for the other. So I challenged Brother Monroe for a duel, and he accepted and set the stage. He said, we're going to fight in 1935, it's going to be a 40 kilometer start. We shall duel at high noon, which is daytime, and it's clear weather. He picked the Royal Navy, and now he's going to be designing his fleet. I'm going to be designing my fleet. My fleet is going to fight on his channel, if you will, and his fleet's going to be fighting on my channel. So. What we're going to do now is build a fleet. I have a 20 ship fleet maximum. So if I want to, I can send them 20 destroyers, but I think they just die rather quickly. There's also the issue that you have 200,000 tons maximum displacement. Um, if you use all of your ships um, and win, you just get 20 points. If you have an empty ship spot, so let's say that I only have 15 ships that I use. I immediately get 5 points if you win. If my fleet does very well in the AI hands on the Brother Monroe's channel, um, I get 2 points if I send the fleet and it wins. That is for every empty ship spot. So uh, sending, let's say, 10 ships and then having those 10 ships win on his channel immediately gains me 20 points. That would be nice to get. Now, I can also, and this is if I'm feeling particularly confident about the abilities of my fleet and the AI, I can let the AI control my whole fleet for the whole battle for 20 points. And before I give over the control to the AI, you can actually set up some orders like where do you want to go, where do you want to follow, do you want to dodge torp, stuff like that. But after that, it is AI control from there. Now, seeing as Monroe picked the Royal Navy, I think it is only fair that I pick the German Reich. We're going to make sure that we have, I think, four battleships, about 20,000 tons displacement each, maybe battle cruiser, and use those ships, send them in, as well as use them for my own battle against Monroe here. So, um, I've been looking around a bit, and I think the hybrid battleship does exactly what I need it to do. It's got a lot of resistance, it has pretty decent top speed, displaces 55,000 tons tops, and if I get four of these, I can get that 200,000 ton limit. So let's get the hybrid battleship out there. Um, a hybrid battleship is, well, I mean, it's a battle cruiser, but um, it's fine. We'll just use the battle cruiser. It's not as speedy as the modern BC, but I think she'll do nicely. I have no idea what Brother Monroe is sending. For all I know, it could be 20 destroyers. It could be two mega battleships. I don't know. So this ship is going to have to be prepared for every eventuality any particular threat that he might send is going to have to get dealt with. That thing is enormous. We're going to have to up this to 50,000 tons, please. Come on. There. It gives me a bit more room to work with. It really is enormous. Okay. Now, let's make sure that this ship has plenty of survivability. So, spacious quarters, elite crew. Um, I want to have about 31 knots top speed. I don't really care about range, but i got to have some. We need to make sure that this thing survives. The more of my ships survive, the more likely they are to actually continuously deal damage. And, well, in that case, you don't want you just need to survive. You also need to make sure the ship doesn't tilt over too much. Seeing as we're starting at 40 kilometers, I'm going to go for stereoscopic rangefinder. I need to start hitting right away. Funnel. I'm going to set a narrow funnel. I might need another one. Uh, we're going to have to upgrade the engines. Let's go for diesels because it's nice and safe. And by safe, I mean the chance of this thing getting damaged is less. And then repair speed is adequate, I believe. Yeah, 120% ship repairs. Um, you're not getting that anywhere else except for diesel 2s, but they're not available. Better auxiliary engine to deal with anything that might be harming the ship. As for steering, let's go for a bit higher. Balanced rudder, I don't want to have these things slow down for anything. Okay then, I think it's going to be a pretty straightforward ship. I'm thinking 16, maybe 17 inch guns. Uh, that's going to be their main armament. And then we're going to have secondaries. Let's see. 
These guys can fire out to 38 kilometers with AP, so they'll not immediately be in range unless I upsize the range that these things are going to get by increasing the barrel length. Now I'm going to go for three turrets, like that. What sort of reload <clears throat> and what sort of pen can I get out of these shells? Uh, TNT and two powder. For those um, going, you might want to build a firebug. Unfortunately, you can't do that. Picric acid, uh, that's this little thing over here, is not allowed. So, yeah, you can still build a firebug to some extent. It's just not going to be as effective. Right, these guns fire every 43 seconds. Not too bad. At, let's say, 20 kilometers, we can pen 24 inches of armor. Or 4 inches of deck armor, and that's with the standard AP shells. That should be good enough, but I'm not really looking at the right picture, am I? Because I changed the slider here. We're going to have to up that to, let's say, 190%. And then you're probably going to start seeing some different results. Yep. Now I can only pen 14 inches, which is pretty easy to survive. I mean, I can set this thing to 15 inches very easily. And still have plenty of tonnage and armor left. So how am I going to play this? Considering going for a different type of armor piercing ammunition, I can go for Cap Ballistic 2. Gives you a ton of pen. Um, if I make the barrels longer and try to fight this out at range, this would mean that I don't get the deck pen. Because let's stick to that 20,000 meter range. Um, I have 3.2 inches of armor pen with that super shell, if you will. If I increase the barrel length, don't mind the warning, um, I'm now looking at 1.7. Accuracy is far better, though. Far better. What if I go a different route and give these guys cap ballistics? Because you get 8.1 inches of armor pen with cap ballistic. It would be... An interesting ship to use. 20,000 meter range, 8.9 inches of HE pen. If I give a max HE, that's going to force, well, mostly force the guns to be using armor pier, oh, sorry, HE ammunition. And with that, I might actually be able to do some damage, but not really at range. Because I'm looking at range belt armor, that's 8.9. But against deck, you're still not getting anywhere. I do think that I need a bit more range, so let's go to like 10%. Because I might be able to start opening up the moment that we spawn in. Not that I'll actually hit something, but if I accidentally hit something, I'll prematurely damage it. That might help. Um, do we have any Mark V guns? We got the 15-inch Mark IV. I can turn this into a 15-inch, let's say 15.9-incher. Because this would give me more reload. Let me just put one of these on and say I want to have a 15.9er, again with 10% more range. We're getting no stats. Um, 60 second reload, 45 second reload. Range is actually better. At let's say 30,000 meter range, I can pen 5 inches of armor. Okay. Hold on. No, that's with the 17. The 15, or the 15.9, doesn't quite get that. No, yes it does. Yes it does. Okay, we're going to go 15.9. So just shy of 16 inch. And this is to make sure that I get that uh, Mark 5, oh, sorry, Mark 4 bonus. I might even be able to go with 4 turrets. So, <laughs> you know, if you're playing the Germans, you're essentially always going to end up with a Bismarck. So that's kind of what's happening here. The problem is, I don't know what I'm going to be facing. I don't know what sort of ship Brother Monroe is going to send. And I don't know how much I need to invest in either protection or secondary guns. So I think just having a couple of secondaries would probably help me a lot. 5 inch... Yeah, 5 inch dual barrel is fine. These are Mark 5s. Now we're talking. 4 inch... Oh right, that doesn't sit there. 3 inch... Are you guys really protesting? Because you don't really have a reason to, do you? Can I go with an 8-inch? Nah, I'm looking at displacement. That won't work. Okay, 6-inch. 
Dual barrel. How about just throwing a couple of torpedo launchers on there? Nice little surprise. If I can make those, what, 21 inch electrics? I know the ship's overweight. That's 10 kilometer range. Oxygens? 18 kilometer range. It's a little better. The problem is, I want to really have to AI control this ship. Because that gives me the 20 additional points. And I don't trust the AI not to torp itself. So I'm not going to actually use that, unfortunately. Uh, let's give this thing more armor um, at the expense of torpedo belt. Yeah, I think this, this thing has potential. This thing has potential. Can we push this slightly further back? I'd love it if these things are all free-spinning turrets, because that means they're just going to be that much easier to use. If the AI just, for some reason or another, decides to throw the ship into a turn, this is going to make sure that the turrets are pretty quickly going to snap back to their targets. Come on. Still too close. Thankfully, with Brother Monroe's mod, which I'm running, the uh, Dreadnought Improvement Project, it's actually really easy to balance the ship out. It doesn't cause this massive fore or aft offset issue anymore. It really helps. Uh, secondary... Yeah, here. Here. And there. Okay, so now we have these things spinning freely. We get good range, we get good pin. I'm going to give him standard shells. Let's say we're fighting in 20 kilometer range. I can have them either fire HE if we're about 7 inches of armor pen or 20 inches against a belt. Now it's entirely possible that that will not be sufficient. That's something that I just can't really plan for. So we'll just have to hope that that's not going to be a problem. Uh, reduce the range. Flash fire is still 7%. Why is flash fire so high? Is that due to TNT? Yeah, TNT 4 has a slightly higher flash chance. TNT 2 has less. What am I getting here? 100% shell damage. It's 120% shell damage. Oh, that's nice to get. Yeah. But I cannot have this ship explode on me. That would be bad form. Okay. I think the rest of it's going to have to go into armor. I have some guns against destroyers. I have these guns which can turn fairly freely, allowing them to deal with cruisers. I have range on them. I have options. And in a case where the AI is most likely going to be controlling your ship, options are good. Okay. Uh, 5.3 inch deck. Oh, this is bad. We're going to have to upgrade that. Um, upgrade this to the max as well. I think that's a bit much. Can I slow down to 30 knots? Is that going to save me? Nah, a bit. Make it a double hull bottom. Just put more onto, let's say, the inner belt. Um, can we have 4 inch inner belt? Like another three in or two inch inner deck. No, it's just over. There, exactly 50,000 tons. Okay, I think that's the ship. That's the ship. This is the Duelist. This ship transports 50,000 tons, doing 30 knots, good range. It has an elite crew, it has spacious quarters, it has plenty of survivability. It can fire both high-end HE and high-end AP shells, dealing with all sorts of threats, uh, whether they're armored or not. It does not really matter. And overall, I would be actually quite comfortable trusting this ship to the AI. So I'm going to send this guy over to Brother Monroe, and then wait for his ships to come in. And then we're going to see who gets the better dual ship. Time for part two. I have received Brother Monroe's fleet. It is three battle cruisers and five flight cruisers, and that's about all that I know of it. So, time for my four battle cruisers to take the seas and show the Brits what's what. The Duelist is going to have to fight it out against these guys. Um, if I send these guys in, every empty ship spot and I win the battle is 16 points, 
because I am not using 16 of my 20, 20 allotted slots. If I let the AI control the fleet, that's 20 points. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay, let's see what we get on the other side. What are these battle cruisers? They're big boys. Look at the length of that thing. Holy crap. He decided to go with a ton of freeboard. Um, a ton of empty deck space as well. These guys have eight five inchers and another four three inchers, so they're largely relying upon their bigger guns. Okay, so these are the big guns. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised at all if their CLs are torpedo spammers. There it is, fifteen launchers per. So that's uh, yeah, that's entire walls of skill that these things can put out. Now, as the start of the battle, I am allowed to set my division up as I want. And then I'm going to hand it off to the AI control, which has me a little concerned. But here we are. Um, I am allowed to control ship's speed if the AI gets stuck ramming each other. <laughs> you don't say. Anyway, uh, we have range. The Battlecruiser Star with 46.4 kilometers of HE range and even more with AP. Look at the... <laughs> Carefully, don't knock something from SpaceX out of the sky. As these shells are flying over. Uh, Brother Monroe ships definitely also have longer barrels. What the... Yeah. 47 kilometer range. Of course, we're not actually going to hit anything at this range. But it's a start. Now, I'm very curious about those light cruisers of his. That's a torpedo range. Yep. 20 kilometers. Oxygen fuel torpedoes. Um, not the biggest, because they would have like 22 to 24 kilometer range, I think. So it's going to be 21 inch torpedoes, is my guess. Alright. Now, I did set these guys up mostly with AP shells. So we still have plenty of those. And with that, especially against that battle cruiser, I expect to deal some serious amounts of damage. Only, however, as I get closer. Oh, we got penned. Interesting. But it was only a minor pen. It was only 84 damage. I'm getting an over pen on a light cruiser. Oh, that's good damage. That is good damage. What's the range? Oh, God. Keep in mind, the enemy has torpedoes. My battle cruisers, by courtesy of Bronner Monroe's Dreadnought Improvement Project, do not have a hydroscope or a hydrophone or a sonar. They don't see the torpedo. Um, if I was commanding this fleet manually, I would, of course, start taking evasive action, uh, zigzag in and out of conflict. But I kind of want to get those additional 20 points. So, uh, yeah, that does open me up to the risk of getting torpedoed. Now, I can still say I'm going to forego that and just take manual air control, but I want to see how it goes. If it goes well, I'll let it go to the AI. If my ships definitely start to get very threatened by these torps, there's a fairly good chance that they will, I might take back control. I just forego the 20 points. And my ships are all targeting this light cruiser for no apparent reason, as far as I'm concerned. We have done a decent amount of damage, but I'm very concerned about getting my ships torpedoed. Leipzig has taken some damage. Come on, stop smoking up. The five inchers are adding their firepower to the fight. Yes, that's good damage. That's one light cruiser, seriously injured. We are, what, 10 kilometers out? Oh boy. Oh boy. <clears throat> start putting these things down and for the love of God, start taking evasive action because you might not see the torpedoes, but they're there. And probably a lot of them. Now, at this point, I'm very much expecting these battle cruisers of theirs to start dealing serious amounts of damage. Thankfully, the stern is not that vulnerable, but my turrets are. That has me a little concerned. Because my turrets, well, I don't have that many of them. So I would much prefer if they actually stay aboard the ship and function. Come on, please sink. 
Got one. Okay. At this point, we should be getting hit by torpedoes. But the AI is sailing in such an angle that I don't think they can launch yet. Oh. Spoke too soon. They're thinking about it. Come on, if you want to sink these guys, now would be an ideal time to get that thing to work. And if you have any half level of intellect, use HE. Because that's what I put these HE shells on the ship for. But I think the ship, the AI, won't actually use those because it doesn't know what level of armor the ship has. Blocked. AP from the front is getting bounced. Doesn't mean that they have a ton of armor. Oh, this star is so fucked. And then they're probably going to start taking apart my battle cruisers one by one. Now this ship took a load of damage. Come on. If he put these launchers on the bow, I would have been in a serious amount of trouble. See, they still haven't launched. Neither of these DDs have, sorry, CLs have launched. Come on, punch it. Seven inches of armor, main belt, and one and a half everywhere else. Kill it. Come on. Now. It's like they're trying to use the light cruiser itself as a torpedo. Oh, shite. Oh, shite. The tulip. Cheers, Monroe. Has. Oh, ho, 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 ho. No. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay, well, the good news is... Um, this ship got hit by 28 torpedoes. But it did take a lot of the fire. And it's doing it again. It's shielding the York. Even though she died. She died saving her sisters. That is phenomenal. Okay, what's my chance to pen this guy? Nine and a half percent? Right, okay. Now, at this point, we really need to get rid of these CLs, but they're not really that big of a risk anymore. They're going to spend the next... Oh, almost half an hour reloading. But they won't be around at that point. Now, the rest of these torps... Oh, that hurt. That was a 15-inch couple of hits. The rest of these light cruisers should be toast. But I think the biggest threat is now the battle cruisers. And we're now even in battle cruiser numbers. Um, but York has taken serious damage, and so has Leipzig. I'm going to forego the challenge for the AI. I'm going to take control of the ships now. We're going to split. You're going to target the totally not the hood. <laughs> okay. Um. Leipzig, main guns on the hood, or whatever is not the hood. And the duelists on the hood, secondaries on the tulip. Engage. York, bring those guns over and fire. You can't fire. Jesus, you missed at 500 meter range? Okay. Still getting chased by a random tulip. Ah, oh, we can't pan that. What's your belt? What's your stern? Aft belt, 5 inch. Well, have I got news for you. I can pen that. Rather well. Rather well. Okay. I think I can still win this. Although Leipzig... Has some survivability issues. Good damage. Good damage. Leipzig might be half dead, but she's still Sir, fighting. Another starship coming in. York. The Enterprise. Um. I think the Enterprise is a little distracted. What are you trying to hit? The Leipzig. You're trying to finish off the cruiser. The battle cruiser. Okay. Tulip should be getting finished pretty soon. Boom! Take that. Down to 34%. 
Use HE. These battle cruisers don't have a ton of armor. Come on. Yes. But totally not the hood. It's totally not exploding yet. But she's definitely going down. She's lost a decent amount of her crew. But not so much that it really impacts her ability to fire. It impacts her ability to control damage. Oh, Leipzig is toast. 3% structural. Come on, finish this thing. Yes. 2%. Gone. Structural damage got her. Um, no, we still need to take attention to that. Duelist. Engage. Enterprise. Is this you on a turn? Wow. That's uh, not a great turn. What are you firing at? Leipzig. Well, you used to be targeting Leipzig. Now you're targeting the York. All right, then. Are you sure that's the York? Was that the last salvo that came in from the York? Or maybe from Leipzig? I'm not sure. Okay, focus your efforts on the Enterprise. You cannot pen them with AP at all. There's a 0% chance. But we're just going to have to HE him then. You're still targeting the inbound York. Four percent chance. Yes. Come on. Oh, you're still firing armor piercing. That doesn't work. You need to keep the York bow in. Just bow in, she has a very good chance of just bouncing these shells. I start going broadside and get hungry, and that will not work. Good damage. I'm surprised they have this little armor on the bell. The, the, the bow belt. I was expecting a bit more. Slow down. Thank god they don't have any torpedoes, though. That's a good hit from the duelists. 128k done here. 56k done by the duelist. Oh, this is not great. This is not great. Chance to pen is good. Switch to armor piercing. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. More flooding. You guys are on top of each other? I'm not sure if this is Brother Monroe's mod doing this, but I see this a lot lately. Ships colliding with each other for no discernible reason. They just ram all the time. I think it might have to do with Brother Monroe's mod on account of ships not behaving quite the same way as in vanilla. They're not as maneuverable. And I think that is expressing itself in the way that these ships are still following, let's say, their vanilla... Um, Oh, fuck me. I got a flash fire. They're still following their vanilla, let's say, evasion rules. And that just does not work. I have one battle cruiser left. No, you need to target the Enterprise. No, 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 no. Don't ram me. Seriously, don't. Fuck off. <clears throat> I don't have the health for this, nor the ships. Duelist. Yeah, you can keep firing at the York all day. The Duelist is the real threat. Come on. She needs a bit more. And then we're going to have to deal with an almost full health incomparable. We're going to start angling towards the incomparable and ignoring the Enterprise because she's dead. There she goes. Okay. Switch the guns around. Ooh, serious damage, but I should be able to win this. The York has already flash fired once, taking all of our ammunition with her. But this ship still has a lot of damage potential. And there it is. That's one salvo and took her down about 40%. 
Come on, duelist. You got this thing dead to rights. He's burning badly. Wow, hold on. The whole ship's on fire except for one compartment? Damn. <laughs> Monroe really changed the amount of damage that fires do. <laughs> Switch to AP. We can now finish him off. Probably. Well, no. Their entire armor is gone. Just use HE. We can finish them off using HE. It's fine. Because our HE just does a lot, lot of damage. 7% structural. I don't think we can save the York. She went under. <clears throat> but she's gone as well. A second later, incomparable sinks. Okay. Pretty good. Pretty good. So, that got me 16 points because I won the battle. But I did not let the AI control the fleet for the whole battle. Because that would have probably yielded a uh, loss for me. So that is a preliminary 16 points for me. Um, I'm not sure how well my ships are going to do when they're fighting Brother Monroe. I mean, I have a pretty good sh a pretty good idea, but Monroe, of course, as a human player, is far more capable of making good use of those light cruisers and not dunking 30 or 40 torpedoes into one battle cruiser. Hop over to his channel to see how many more points my fleet's going to be able to get there. I hope you guys enjoyed the battle. Let me know what your thoughts are down below, and I'll see you soon for more videos.